Uh, walk and talk video will be anyway, but I thought I would read Enda Kantavad's comment here and respond to it as I walk. But it's going to be related to a lot of this anti bullshit man stuff, too. He left a comment. Anyway, um, so this is an important point because you seem to be implying that there is some sort of purpose out there, even if it is futile, empty, and early, wearisome one. Um, are you saying that there are goals, but <coughs> they are empty ones? It sounds that way. So um, this is all related to the DNA molecule and how I argue that we function um, based on the impositions of the molecule, the, this phenomenon of replication. Now controls our behavior and uh, you know we're stuck. Um, now controls. Well, it's the wrong way to phrase it. Um, that the the function of replication combined, okay, with the idea of mutation and natural selection, the fact that you open this door to evolution through this structure, and so it's a phenomenon of uh, material arrangement. That when you have these components, this kind of fire can burn. This the idea of a, a sentient. So if you think of feelings or sentience as fire, there's a chemistry that creates it. Uh, the f f phenomenology, uh, uh, an arrangement. Uh, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't call it a goal. You wouldn't say the, the goal built into nature is that wood burns. You wouldn't call it a goal. <laughs> okay, you just say it's what it does based on um, the circumstance. And so, you, uh, you know, based on the, the properties of the material elementary universe, uh, wood can burn. <laughs> yeah, uh, chemistry that contains the right amount of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen will burn. Uh, carbon's not really necessary, but anyway... Um, just a fact. Um, it's just a fact that when you have a DNA molecule and uh, a means of a, a, a related set of chemistry capable of manipulating it to turn it into a um, blueprint, essentially, for construction, that you'll have, you'll let loose the fire of evolution. Um, and the, the fire eventually, uh, possibly, uh, possibly another kind of fire, a blue flame or a green flame or a pink flame of uh, these other phenomenons that fire makes possible. Uh, the fire of evolution makes possible the brilliant gold flame, <laughs> you know, of uh, human whatever orgasm or whatever so yeah but it's not a goal uh, goal is so so this sort of gets to my fundamental argument about why our communication is so um, broken is that these words aren't consistently over different conversations um, the, the the definitions of them are not consistent um, so where it might be for the purpose of expedience, okay, to call something nature does a goal, uh, it's explicitly not a goal by the standard where you recognize goals as being um, rational outcomes. So goals established by arbitrary forces are a lot different than goals established by rational intents. And... Uh, you know, to call them both the same thing takes away all the the real meaning and uh, the the usefulness almost of the word is greatly diminished uh, by the fact that they can have these very um, inconsistent um, source um, uh, <coughs> whatever different qualifications or properties. Um, so it just breaks the idea of the usefulness of the language. 
Anyway, I don't want to make an argument about language, but I do want to make an argument about goals and these distinctions. I've often talked about them, and I have to talk about them more, I guess. Uh, you know, in this, the, the, the sense of we have our personal game, then there's the big picture game. There's the, um, the, you know, the context, the frames, the fields, there we go, the fields you're playing in. So almost like um, the, the magnetic fields, you can have a little magnet, and here it is, a, here's a raccoon track of this. Um, you can have a, rac, a raccoon track. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot of them here. Um, they have a little, you know, they have very, a hand that looks very much like a hand. I mean, they have a paw that looks very much like a hand. Anyway, um, Professor Anton. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they have, they have an almost opposable. Um, anyway, um, where was I? I think we probably hold a gun. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, raccoons with guns. Um, yeah, so like a magnet. You can have a magnet inside a, uh, one of those collider things. So you have a little magnet inside a bigger magnet. Inside the biggest magnet, there's the planet's magnetosphere. Inside the sun's magnetosphere. Uh, and so, yeah, there's these fields that we exist in. So I have my personal field that I'm playing, this little game. And the little game is in the context of maybe the state I live in and then the country I live in and, you know, that kind of crap. The decade I live in, the, you know, century I live in, the, you know, all these breakdowns. And so what's happening in these conversations a lot, I mean, especially between me and the anti-bullshit man, is that we are never, we are often not talking about the same field at the same time. When he's talking big picture, I'm talking, you know, practical human, what do I do as an individual picture, and vice versa kind of thing. And so some of these arguments you make as arguments in the, for the biggest game there is, the ultimate field of your influence, and the other arguments are, you know, more narrow about what is a the pragmatic do I go left or do I go right? Wow, amazingly cold breeze coming that way. <laughs> it was so warm back there. Uh, it's funny how that hill you know distorts in the stream bed and the way the air comes across it. But anyway, that's not neither well it's not that it's neither here nor there. Yeah, somebody else using my mud technique maybe. Damn, I was really hoping this shit would be gone. Fuck. Don't like this much. This is all gonna break. Oh, fucking hey. That is icy. Yes, it is, Gary. Very icy. <laughs> yeah, get this shit off of here. So not to die later. Shit off of here. I should have brought the hammer. Okay, enough of that shit. Get out of here. Alive. There you go. When those come off, that's gonna get really dicey. Ugh. But there's rocks here. So I could just pick up a rock with my atomic strength. Okay. <laughs> I used to have powers. <laughs> yeah, I used to. I used to have power. Many, many powers. I could crush them all. My powers. But now I become weak. Yeah. Ooh, I make iceberg. Yeah. Ooh, iceberg. I did it. It's my iceberg. I declare it. In mental hammy. Oh. Yeah, that's, I don't know, I guess I'll leave that for now. <laughs> yeah, that's two inches thick. I don't think it's going anywhere soon. <sighs> anyway, that was fun, right? A little bit fun. Sitting on my elbow hurts. All right. 
where I'm heading here is trying to explain that we have a whole bunch of goals, goals established by biology, by our physical body and our uh, psychology, you know, our play, our game play psychology. That's another thing. Uh, and to kind of I left some kind of stupid ass comment like, uh, whoa, says you it's a game. <laughs> you know, that kind of bullshit. You're just like, well, come on, you got a better metaphor? I mean, where exactly does life fall short of the game definition? Uh, you know, it's got all the components except for the gods competing. But I mean, we're definitely pieces you know, roaming a, a, a playing field. So, and, uh, you know, with uh, objectives. <laughs> so it's pretty gamey, buddy. Oh, whatever. I said, that's the kind of crap you just, why do I, I mean, if I kind of waste my time doing that, there's no point in conversation. If game is an outrageous metaphor, uh, unqualified, uh, if, you know, <laughs> not rationally sound, uh, metaphor. Oh, fuck you. Anyway, back to where I was. So this, this goal thing is just so fucking important. And this realization that the value, value is built into a well-defined goal. So if my goal is to build a building that doesn't fall down on the occupants, the value of my goal is in the non-harm created by my good architecture. So I successfully prevented, <laughs> right, the harm of my building being shit. And uh, by making my building not shit. Uh, so that's the rational kind of style goal in that it's a fundamental value that we can agree on. That building's falling on you is not preferable. It's unpreferable, <laughs> reasonably. We could say in most circumstances, except for when Adolf Hitler is eating lunch, building falling down is not a good idea. Uh, anyway, I didn't want to really get to the value subject. I want to get to this goal word. So again, there's all these goal imperatives goal-like things, you know, that make us, that makes it seem like we're playing a game, obviously, because we have all these internal goals. Like, it's almost like different organs in my body have different goals, you know, and they're all playing a different game. And, uh, you know, brain has to sit up here and figure out, well, you know, is my stomach or my penis, uh, you know, have, uh, is it, whose turn is it? You know, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm going to decide between these, uh, you know, interests. Um, let's see. So, yeah, those goals so, are all uh, crap in the sense that they're, 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 not, they're not defined by an architect. They're not defined by reason. They're not defined by some kind of intelligent force that says... Oh, I can figure out that when you're architecting, the thing to do is to make the building not fall down. Well, nature doesn't have any of that wisdom. It doesn't know the difference between falling down or not falling down. The only thing it, the only thing evaluated in its gameplay is, uh, does it create a winner? Period. Or more precisely, uh, I mean, it's almost more precisely. I, I'm not sure if it's more precisely, so I'll have to think about that for a minute. Whether it's creating losers, and the default is the winner. So that might be more an accurate description of what's happening, is evolution weeds out losers and leaves behind something you call the winner. It, it, it squishes shit <laughs> that's not good enough. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily say what remains is good. It just says that other shit was worse. So 
so it annihilates the worse to leave you the lesser kind of a thing. Um, anyway, um, where else am I going with this? So yeah, those aren't rational goals. Intelligent things wouldn't goal create uh, arbitrarily like that, like by some sensible notion of let's just see if we hit everything with a hammer uh, <coughs> whether anything doesn't break or not. And let's just keep hitting everything harder until we break everything but one. <sighs> yeah. I mean, a, a sensible, intelligent thing would say, well, is this breaking process expensive? Am I going to be sent a bill for that? And uh, so that's sort of the, now where we're getting into the anti-bullshit man argument and the value relative argument, because the value relativists think you have to send an actual bill, uh, you know, that the universe has to show up at your doorstep with a summons uh, saying you broke the law, you did bad, you suck, and that the universe is going to come to your house and kick you in the nuts and make you overtly pay for your bad performance. No, that's not going to happen. But the truth of your bad performance remains the truth. Uh, whether you're punished for a crime doesn't change the fact that the crime took place and that the whole point of it being called a crime is the fact that it likely created uh, very negative impacts on other people. And they're paying the price. Okay, the price for crime is the victims. That's the real price. The real price isn't your punishment for crime. The real price isn't your reclamation. The real price isn't... All that shit is incidental to the whole reason uh, what you did was called bad, is that it created bad in the world. And that's where it matters. So it's not like I'm saying the universe is going to show up and piss on your grave if you sucked and that somehow you're going to feel it. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to deal with it. No, there will be no personal retribution. The, the sentient life will pay for it. Sentient life will go to the prison of inefficiency, the prison of waste, the prison of horror because of your behavior. That's where it will be paid for. And all that's going to, the only statement being made is that in the book of life that no one ever reads and no one ever needs to read, noted next to you will be the red figure, uh, you know, with a little fuck you. You know, your, your deficit uh, will be acknowledged in a sense that it's a recorded fact of history and the, the little red marks, the deficit, can be connected to all the little sentiences that you uh, destroyed in some way or harmed, that you degraded their would-have-been existence, and that will be just part of the fact of your existence. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be interpreted, doesn't need to be acknowledged, doesn't need to be read, doesn't need to be understood. It's just a fact that your performance was you sucked. You were a lemon. You were a rotten, lousy, piece of shit car. Uh, and it's, it's just that's the truth of it. You sucked. Damn water. I gotta oil my boots. They are leaking. I'm not supposed to do that. Uh, so anyway. I believe that's not enough. It's never enough on this subject. But uh, the other point to be made that I'll probably no doubt have to get to again and again and again anyway, so I might as well do it here, uh, is, uh, oh, I just had it and I lost it.
Don't value, value relativism, we already did that. Um, absolute value, value relativism. There was some other anti-bullshit man bullshit. Uh, ah, shit. I hate when that happens. Uh, there's a lot of mixed subjects here. But the, the truth is there's one truth. And I'll say that again. He mocks that idea. He mocks it. And I find that laughable. And so I'll mock him for it. I'll laugh at him. Ha ha! Silly. Uh, you know, these contrary definitions of the reality. Uh, this is mush. It's nonsense. And uh, so with this whole idea of defining an incompetent is, you know, what's your absolute standards for that? You're not, you're not going to have absolute standards. You're going to have pragmatic social standards. So then we're back to a social contract. So here you are using a social contract to define the absolute of competence. And uh, you can't do that. Uh, obviously all uh, wrong understanding, all error, is all error. That's all it is. It's ignorance. Uh, it's not a crime. It's just in and of itself. Uh, but it is decidedly uh, not trustworthy, not likely to lead to something called efficiency. Uh, so it is to be pro appropriately considered a scourge for you to uh, sit back and allow uh, ignorance to control the gameplay and in turn uh, screw the value uh, product and it will mess up the value product all right i think that's enough for now <sighs> really isn't a bad day i wish you know this stuff really should be disappearing and still here damn it anyway until next time whoa i think i'm back yeah i am um I was just thinking about game and game and game and game inside a game inside a game. And the game between the internal I want, I need, I feel like I'm horrified, I'm terrified, I'm horny, I'm hungry uh, game versus the intelligent, rational, disrecognition game. I recognize that I'm hungry, horny, terrified. <laughs> you know what? I recognize I'm an emotionally sensitive creature, all that kind of crap. I also recognize intelligently that what I want biologically or emotionally isn't necessarily what the world needs. I might want to be the, whatever, Super Bowl hero. <laughs> yes, to throw the, the big winning of the game pass. Yeah, I might want to do that. My intellect knows the world will not be a better place if that happens. If I go, you know, off to Disney World, <laughs> you know, as the champion, and they're singing the song, everybody's singing, you know, all my minions are singing, we are the champions of the world and whatnot and such, and we shall mock you for being losers and all that kind of crap. Um, yeah, it doesn't make the world a better place. No, no, it just makes Gary and Gary's dick happy. But it doesn't do anything for the world. It doesn't mean anything in the big picture. It's just crap. It doesn't matter whether I'm singing the song or Joe Asshole is singing the song. Who cares? It just doesn't matter. And uh, so that's the difference between understanding these different games, uh, you know, the different levels of play, uh, you know, expert versus, you know, amateur fucktard, uh, you know, just a, it's, there is a difference uh, in understanding, and so the only thing that matters is that understanding part. People keep wanting to talk about things uh, as emotional experiences rather than as enlightening experiences. Uh, grief should inform you that life is dangerous. Um, fear 
<laughs> I should inform you. Uh, horror should inform you. Likewise, desire should inform you. Uh, and the the cold, <laughs> the cold, dead fish that is satisfaction of your desire. Uh, the last thing you want to do is succeed. Uh, yeah, the fact that the, what you're informed by life that having isn't keeping. Having isn't keeping. Ooh, damn. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a nasty truth. Ouch, ouch. Uh, and should you be informed by that? That's all. Just be informed by the circumstance that there's a game, and the game isn't about you. It just isn't. It's about a molecule named DNA. Yeah, that's why I write a children's book. Little DNA, the adventures of little DNA uh, on Earth. And what a mess he made, the little fucktard. Uh, yeah. So all these questions of uh, goal acquisition. And that's like the first goal. So let's say, what's the first goal of a rational brain? Oh, let's devise some rational goals. <laughs> yeah, that's the first goal. That's the joke, right? It's kind of like that wish thing. You know, if I give you a wish, you know, your first wish is, rationally, a million, no, no, a zillion more wishes. <laughs> yeah, there's, just, there's no way you could screw it up and not remember to leave one of the wishes behind to have more wishes. Just keep filling your wish bucket. Um... But yeah, that's the the first goal, is to understand what the right goals are. I mean, I could put a goal here. <laughs> you know, I could even piss it. I could piss you a little goal right here. Goal. <sighs> yeah. No, I'm not going to bother trying to write it, but snow is harder than I thought. Uh, so yeah, that could be a goal. It doesn't mean anything. All right? I just said it. It doesn't... Doesn't have any integrity. So the whole point is to uh, establish goals that have continuity to what you observe to be rational, uh, um, uh, uh, not priorities, but uh, uh, preferable outcomes. Yeah. So, so again, we're back to sort of this evolution thing in terms of. It's more about finding out what the wrong thing to do is and not do that first. First, do no harm. <laughs> then you win. Uh, figure out what the things that aren't goals are. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe what's left behind might be a goal. But, uh, yeah, I think the first rational goal is to be something called productive. To <clears throat> improve uh, the... the uh, time-space continuum to enter it one way in one condition and to leave it in a better condition than you got it in. I think that's pretty much a kind of a rational, logical theme. So that would be the goal, is to get to the end of your life having successfully added value to the noise level, to the interaction to the bing bong boom bomb all these little pinball all these little ping pong ball thingies bouncing all over the crap and uh, you can recognize bad bounces <laughs> you can okay Jew starving to death dying of typhus in World War II is a bad thing you can recognize it and you can say I'm gonna stop that kind of bounce from happening you find bounces that are bad bounces, and you stop them from happening, and therefore you become a very, very good thing. And that's all you're trying to do. Leave the dump better than you got it. Uh, and if you're ambitious, like me, uh, yeah, you take that shit seriously. <laughs> yeah. Betty, Betty, seriously. Oh, man, this is crookedy and slippery. I don't like this. No, quickly, Gary. Okay. Oh, ice, ice. 
Oh, oh, ice, ice. I could write a song like that. Oh, ice, ice. Oh, ice, ice. Okay. Should be gone tomorrow. It's going to be record warm tomorrow, I think. So that would be spectacular. But it's going to rain, so fuck that. But it really has been the coldest December of my life memory. And winter hasn't even started, like, you know what I mean? I was like, we're, holy shit, I feel like, you know, I feel like it should be like the end of January. I've had enough winter already. Look at that, two dogs. <laughs> yeah, look at that, two dogs. Owner? What's an owner? I don't need one of those. Well, go about your business. I guess one dog is walking the other dog. Just they can do it by themselves. They don't need humans anymore. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, just like Earth doesn't need them. No, they don't need to be nagging me, fucker. I'm gonna drop dead or something. I don't see anybody moving. Well, the dogs don't seem all that, you know, interested. So I assume their owner was a shithead. Because the dogs don't seem very panicked about it all. They're just like, eh, yeah, he's dead. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. We are now free. Yeah. We shall blaze ourselves a new trail. Yeah. City dump, here we come. Yeah, it's probably dog paradise anyway. All right, that's enough, probably. Excuse me, that's just an emotional expression. They come out of me now and then, so I'm just so... <laughs> yeah. Oh. My, my narrow, small game, my, my piece of the game, yeah, is a bit brutal. And yeah, it's not likely <laughs> because my brain just won't, won't play. It's just it's refusing to play. It's just refusing to go along with anything. It's rejecting all the rules, all the umpire, all of it. It's just saying, fuck you. I'm going to fucking cut DNA molecule. You're not going to tell me what to do. Anyway. I think we're done. It really is enough. So, I don't think we have anything lovely here. That's not very lovely. Looks like lumber. Anyway, so the next time.